Welcome back to another episode of Week in Review. This week, we'll take a look at the Argo SRV, networking improvements, 3.5 and more. So with that said, let's get started. So at number 5, we start with the roadmap update. Another busy week at CRG, pushing an extra 4% to the 3.5 roadmap, bringing us up to 61% completion. Our biggest winners include ship AI combat behaviours at 25%, hard surface shader improvements at 15%, and distortion damage improvements at 14%. Quantum travel improvements and DNA face customization were the only tasks to lose progress, dropping 2 and 1% respectively. Vehicle Radar V2 is the only task awaiting progress, and ArcCorp now sits at an average of 73% completion. Progress is looking good, and some good signals for the next release. 3.6 was quiet this week, with the only change being 17% progress added to harvestable entity spawning. The Squadron roadmap moves forward 1% this week, however, dropping realistic firing V2 into next quarter's roadmap, and losing 10% on vehicle HUD V2. Not all bad news though, as player carryables V2 and the missile launcher both added 3% to their progress totals. A solid week yet again from CIG, with approximately 5 weeks to go until launch. CIG confirmed that development has branched into the 3.5 build, so we should be receiving more news and the first Evocati builds in the near future. At number 4, we have Lore Content. This week's Lore Content looks at a darker side of the verse and its criminal empires. The story of Governor and his attempts to become a legit cybersecurity expert came back on him as he attempted to secure a number of trading systems for a criminal organisation. It's a good read, and you can find it over on the RSI website. At number 3, we have Around the Verse. This week's ATV covers a range of updates for 3.5, including AI, networking, and more. CIG have been working on the collision avoidance system for AI. The previous system simply allowed the AI to walk on its path until it detected a collision, move out of the way quickly, and move straight back onto the path. In the new system, it notices the collision ahead of time, and moves the path naturally out of the way, avoiding the sudden jerking motion we see in the current version. This should make them look much more natural, and reduce the number of desynchronizations and broken animations. 3.5 brings some network improvements, aiming to reduce the number of stalls in object container streaming. The most common one is when quantum traveling, with some hitching occurring when arriving as assets are streamed in. Another big change is fixing some of the disconnect handling due to some changes in OCS. Currently, disconnects can cause a number of client and server crashes, and sometimes an infinite loading screen, Hopefully, with the new fixes, these should be reduced and the experience should be much smoother. Snow and geyser effects are being worked on for some upcoming environments. Steam can now be generated by the geysers, adding to the feel of the environment. Thruster damage effects also continue to see work, with a number of improvements to the damage states and appearance. And that's all for ATV this week. More good progress as we head towards the release of 3.5. At number 2, we have Reverse the Verse. This week's RTV focuses on the all-new Argo SRV, with John Crew, Vehicle Pipeline Director. The first question of the week looks at the tractor beam, and whether it will be the same as is used on other ships. Ships such as the Reclaimer, 315P, Caterpillar, etc. all have tractor beams, but different ships will have different size and power beams. They will require a lot of power, making it difficult to do anything else with the ship while they're running. CIG currently don't have a definitive size for the maximum size for items to be towed with a beam. It takes a lot of work to stabilise ships and move them, but CIG are currently working on the Cutlass as being the largest size it can pull. But this will depend on a number of factors, such as cargo in the ship, atmosphere being towed, and more. It's going to be very difficult to capture a ship that doesn't want to be caught in the beam. It won't be impossible, as CIG don't want to lock out this prospective gameplay, but it'll be difficult enough to make it hard to abuse. The tractor beam is not necessarily a ship component that can be upgraded and replaced, but CIG aren't close to the idea of adding this in the future. 
The SRV can tow a tank, possibly even behind the ship, to allow you to turn the tank into a spacefaring vehicle. You can even use the SRV to load up the Kraken with ground vehicles such as tanks. It may be possible to move certain asteroids with the tractor beam, but CIG aren't certain yet. This would allow you to build your own asteroid fields or other defences. The SRV can tow ships through quantum travel, though there's currently no decisions on travelling through jump points while towing. Multiple ships can also tow a larger ship through quantum, doing the jump as a group. The tractor beam can't inherently cause damage, but it can be misused to smash ships into other objects. Parked ships will be vulnerable to the tractor beam if left on the surface of a planet, and the current advice is to leave the power on, allowing the shields to remain on while you're not there. Shields will make it harder to use the tractor beam on a ship, but it's currently not decided how difficult this will be. The SRV will be able to move cargo around on and off the hull series of ships if you want to load it this way. The official SRV name stands for Standard Recovery Vehicle, something CIG have been debating since the original announcement. This name was only settled on just before this week's episode of RTV. Theoretically, you can use the tractor beam to tow a human being, but CIG might tweak this before it releases. The SRV can also be used to aid larger ships get out of atmosphere if they're too heavy. The tractor beam will be able to misfire when it becomes degraded or old, but CRG aren't sure what will happen when this happens. The control is done in first person, similar to how the prospector's mining beam currently works. Theoretically, an Idris or Javelin can be towed with enough SRVs, but it'll be a slow, clunky experience, and you need to make extra sure that the Idris or Javelin is willing. An SRV probably won't be able to stop a ship from escaping its beam, unless it's a very small ship, but it will be difficult to escape. EMPs will disable tractor beams, but it can also be used to disable a ship and its shields for you to then be able to grab it with the tractor beam. And that's all for RTV this week. Plenty of new info and content for the latest ship from Argo. And finally, at number one, we have the Community Overview. The community continued to seek out fun and entertaining bugs in the verse, and speculate about the game's future. It seems CIG's recent roadmap has renewed confidence in the release cycles, with CIG being realistic about their goals for the year. Citizens continue to speculate on the Evocati release dates, and there's even a group who have supposedly discovered more drug labs in this current patch. I'll leave you to find out more info on that. That's all from me for this week. Don't forget to check out the giveaway listed below, like if you liked it, get subscribed, and leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'll see you in next week's episode of Week in Review.